Hello everyone, thanks for clicking on today's video. My name is Sissy and I love arts and crafts and sharing my silly thoughts on random things. Occasionally, as in rarely, <laughs> I enjoy painting, like actually painting on a canvas. The desire only comes every now and again and I have to have a clear idea in my head of what I want. I think the reason I do it so rarely is because the idea in my head almost never manifests itself onto canvas or paper. Unlike other mediums like knitting or sewing or even diamond painting and embroidery, I feel like it is far more difficult to really make one's thoughts into reality. I admire those artists who, of course, are classically trained, which probably helps a fair amount, <laughs> and are able to create these incredible pieces of art where life seems to literally jump off the page. When I attempt something like that, I get lopsided noses, eyes that look deranged, not even dignified enough to be called cartoonish, and limbs of varying lengths and sizes, essentially stuff of nightmares. Don't even get me started on the fingers. I do not have an excruciating unlimited amount of hours to devote myself to making a pinky look like a pinky instead of a cartoon sausage that looks like it got electrocuted one too many times. <laughs> I just don't have the patience, but really, I'm just lazy, get bored very easily, and have zero talent. When I do occasionally paint, I stick to things like landscapes, since even my non-human critters tend to look very nondescript. But then I think about the quote-unquote artists who make a bajillion dollars selling a toilet and calling it art. Maybe I should try my hand at that. I wonder what you need to do to stick a toilet on a pedestal and call it art. Maybe I should go around saying it's an existential expression of the downfall of humanity or something like that. I'm kidding. I literally have no idea what these artists talk about when they say that their art represents something in society. There, that's my problem. <laughs> I know I'm very late to the game, but like pretty much everyone out there, it seems, I love Bob Ross. He had his resurgence recently in like 2020, right? Well, I guess that would make sense since we were all stuck at home. <laughs> Once we got tired of making sourdough, why not paint? Anyway, I grew up watching Bob Ross on PBS, and I will admit when I was a kid, I thought he was boring. I was bored. and was like, why, Mom? Why are we watching this boring dude drawing landscapes and talking low and slow? I truly did not begin to appreciate Bob Ross until my adulthood, when his soothing voice became comforting and the words he was saying gave me confidence, and the images he was creating became beautiful and warm. I wish I had appreciated him more, to be honest. Well, today, I thought it might be fun to try something I haven't done before. I was at a dollar store and saw this little gem of a canvas with a sunset scene, and I thought it would be fun to try it out, but looking at the picture, I feel like it's missing something. It's a little too simple in my opinion, and I thought, why not turn to my buddy Bob Ross for inspiration? So I've decided to follow one of his breathtaking mountain tutorials, but follow the lines of this pre-printed canvas, if that makes sense. Like, you know, give it my own flair. This is different too because I usually try to go in with either my own stenciling to follow or just get into painting a blank canvas. There's something comforting about having an idea sketched out for you though, but I worry it might be considered cheating to not fully come up with the idea yourself. So again, I'm not great at painting, but I thought it might be fun to try. After all, Bob Ross says anyone can paint and there are no mistakes, just happy accidents, which makes me feel a lot better. Let's see how we do. To accompany my amateur attempt, let's get on to today's topic of being very confused about acrylic nails. I want to know your opinion on something. What do you think about fingernails, specifically decorating them? Now, as you see from my videos, I have no problem painting them. Well, sort of. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's kind of a pain and a nuisance and you need to keep them refreshed and looking nice. Otherwise, they look terrible instantly. Yes, I did do gel for a while. My mom was doing them every two weeks, which is incredible. But then we were reading about possible melanoma on the fingers from the constant use of UV and I don't know. Basically, it was my fault. I talked her out of it. We haven't done it since. I say we because we get our nails done together. I often paint my nails at home too, especially now since the regular paint only lasts so long. But we do go out to get our nails done. And we don't go to a regular nail salon either. We go to spas. You know, like the fancy ones at hotels. Yeah, which is fine. I enjoy them. I do. To a point. I might have shared before that I am pretty introverted. I would much rather stay home and do something than go out. And I get pretty severe anxiety if I have to talk to someone. Especially someone I don't know very well. Well, that is taken to another level when I go to the spa. My mother prefers the fancy spas because she can wear a bathrobe and sit in a sauna as well as getting her nails done. She can also have a glass of wine and some trail mix because they are complimentary. I get it. It's nice. I like those elements as well. However, it's the talking for me. I feel like you have to make small talk with your technician. It's the nice thing to do since she's sitting there cleaning out your nasty toes and judging the cuticles on your fingers. Look, I keep myself clean, but I don't particularly like messing with my own toes, okay? 
So when it comes to small talk, I overthink everything. I worry that how I sound is stupid and what I say is dumb and how I say what I say is lame. I know for those of you extroverts, you don't understand, but trust me here. Because of this, I actually don't particularly enjoy going to get my nails done. Do I like how my nails come out? Absolutely. Does my inexperienced, mediocre home job pale in comparison? Of course it does. However, I can be a bimbo in my own home without worrying what anyone else thinks. <laughs> also, the price tag. Now, as a small business owner, I totally get it. You need to charge for the service you're getting because it's quality. However, I can't afford going constantly and consistently to get my nails done, especially at a high-end salon where I'm just getting a basic paint job and not at a salon where the incredibly talented artists paint your fingernails and create amazing works of art. My husband isn't particularly thrilled, by the way, when I come home from the spa and he jokes that he didn't know he had a second car payment. I snap back that he wishes the car payment were only 200 bucks a month. <laughs> but regardless of anxiety and price tag, getting your nails done, I feel, has mixed results. Yes, they look great. But like I said in the beginning, if you don't maintain it or keep that never-ending cycle of getting them done, whether they are regular or gel nail polish, they become bad looking. Then there's the other extreme, the fake nails. Now, I am no expert on this. In fact, I've only ever gotten acrylic nails done once in my life, and that was for my wedding. I got them fairly short, at least for acrylic nails, I think, and I'll get into that more in a moment, for square nails and Tiffany blue for my wedding, and they were gorgeous. They really were. I hated them. Absolutely abhorred them. Why? Well, I played music for almost my entire life, specifically piano, when really shouldn't have long nails or much length of any kind in order to play because you need the tips of your fingers along with the rest of your phalanges. Having nails just makes the playing dynamics more difficult to achieve. So my entire life, I've had short nails. Oh, and I do bite them. Yes, I know it's bad. I've been working on it, and I only catch myself doing it when I'm stressed now instead of out of boredom like I used to, which is almost just as bad because I'm pretty regularly stressed. <laughs> but I'm working on it. In fact, coloring my nails helps with that because I don't want to touch them when there is polish on them because they look so nice. So I guess that is a pro for painting nails. Anyway, I've spent my whole life with very, very short nails. And when I went to get them done for the wedding, I thought I would really like it. Again, and I'll post a picture here, you can see they weren't particularly long, but I will tell you the absolute struggle I went through with these nails. Couldn't play the piano well, I could barely type on the computer or my phone, and ladies, please tell me, how the heck do you keep them clean and not bug you when things get up in there? I felt like I was constantly cleaning out under my nails because if I went to eat a finger food, pick something up that was maybe sticky or gooey or dirty in some way, clean the dishes, etc., stuff would magically end up under my nails. It was a constant battle to keep them clean. I don't know how you do it. Also, and this is another complete mystery to me, I was never able to work a job where I could have long nails or decorations of any kind. I had to get a written exemption for my wedding nails from work, I kid you not. Then after only a few weeks after the wedding, I had to take them off for work, which is a whole other story because I had no idea there's a specific way to take off fake nails instead of brute force and ribbage, which is what I essentially, with great frustration, did over a matter of days. Yeah, should have looked that one up. But back to the work thing. How do you get a job where you can have these long talons decorated with everything under the sun? I think they are cool and totally impractical at the same time. I can never do them, but I do like to look at pictures of them from time to time. Until they get ridiculous. Do you remember that trend, I don't know if it is still done, where people were sticking literal objects onto their nails like chains and toys and the like? Side note, when I was looking up pictures, I made the mistake of typing in extreme nail designs and somewhere disturbing. I feel like that's the best word for it. I won't add the picture because it really is something, but have you seen nails that look like teeth or hair? Yeah, I don't know. When is making a statement going too far? I also feel like some got so extreme that the use of your fingers is impossible, and as someone who uses her fingers for quite literally everything is an absolute terrifying thought to me. How do you do it? And again, how do you find a job where you can do that? One of my jobs is periodically have a manager go around and measure our nail lengths. I'm not kidding. And if your nail was anything but a neutral tone, you had to go to the vending machine they had in the back, purchase nail polish remover, and take off the polish before you could go back on the floor. It was pretty extreme. I remember there was this one time that I had painted a soft red on my nails for the holidays. I forgot to take it off before work and didn't realize until I got there that it wasn't a true neutral tone. I panicked the entire day and did my best to keep my hands in fists so as not to show my nails. Fortunately, I got through the shift, but I was definitely a basket case. Would someone have cared? Looking back, probably not. It was not exactly a true red by any means, and it probably would have been fine. I am a rule follower, though, so dumb things like that bother me to no end. But back to the nails. Not only are there extreme styles, but the literal lengths people go to for their nails. 
pun intended. <laughs> I think it was on that show, My Strange Addiction on TLC, where there was a woman who was so obsessed with her long nails and getting them glammed up. First of all, how in the world has she kept them from not breaking? I so much as look at my nails if they have any length on them and they either mysteriously break naturally. I get them caught in a sweater or something soft or whack them on a corner somewhere or like I've mentioned, I chew them. Having nails as long as that lady had requires serious dedication to keep them from breaking, especially natural nails, which she had. My next question, and this might be kind of gross, so I'm sorry, but how does she wipe herself? I just, I don't know. Her nails were to the floor. Like the fact that she could do anything is unfathomable. And how long did it take to style her nails? I remember there was a scene where she went to a nail salon with a whole group of ladies who all had extremely long nails get together to get their nails done. And I can't imagine how long that took. It's amazing. I do remember she said there were some things she needed help with. And I remember another scene where it showed her struggling to turn a knob on a door. And I'm thinking to myself, her nails are gorgeous, but at what cost? I'm also reminded of, and I'm not sure where I saw this, but a story about a man in India, I believe, who had the Guinness World Record for the longest nails. I remember that he said he had the nails, or was it nail? I almost feel like he either had one nail or the nails on only one hand. Maybe that was it, just one hand. Anyway, he said he had the nails for years, and it affected his life. The nails were so long that they were gnarled and curled, like when you see those stories of those poor horses whose hooves don't get trimmed and they get all thick and curly. I remember that they were interviewing the guy because he finally decided to get his nails cut. They had to use like industrial tools to saw them off. And because his nails had been so long and gnarled, he couldn't even move his hand because it basically stayed in one position for such a long time. Now, of course, these stories are extreme, but it is fascinating to see what people deem beautiful or wonderful. Is doing something unique like this worth the effects? Like, is it just to garner attention or is it an expression of one's creativity and individualism? Is it worth doing something like having nails so long that they affect your daily life? Even if it doesn't affect your daily life. But I do have to say, the nails always look cool and gorgeous. And I think it's awesome that people want to express themselves through things like super elaborate nail designs. I love to look at them. I often enjoy watching nail tutorials to relax. And I'm always so jealous of the extremely talented artists who can make such stunning designs. Whenever I try, they just come out kind of blobby. <laughs> I would love to know your opinion on different nail trends and your favorite length and designs. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Have an amazing day and I'll talk to you again soon.